Hi there, Jason Cook from Corky Composites, bringing you part two of our atomic side mounted video camera helmet video. Today I'm going to talk firstly about safety concerns for jumping side mounted video equipment. Uh, this is a CX100 box I've got mounted on a padlock installed in our atomic helmet. And firstly, I'd just like to address some of the safety concerns some of the guys out there might have or might not know of when flying side mounted video equipment. Back in the early 90s when I started jumping, once we had over 100 jumps, we didn't have to wear a helmet. But there are instances where I've actually had my ears boxed by my risers during the opening sequence. And one of the reasons is, is that as I pitch my pilot chute, I lift my head back to look up at the parachute whilst it was opening. So one of the concerns we have when side-mounted video equipment, if you have a look at the side profile here, you imagine my three-ring release system sits on my shoulder here, with my head nice and straight, as my risers come up, they're going to contact the side of the box. Actually, our risers probably sit within the middle of the box. By having my head forward during opening or looking down at the ground, as the risers come forward during the opening sequence, see they can stop pretty much behind the box. But if I tilt my head back during the opening sequence, there's more of a chance of the risers contacting the box or alternatively getting in front of the box. And once, line, once tension comes on your parachute lines and on your risers and they tighten up, there's a good chance you can come back and contact the front of your box or alternatively the front of your video camera. And there's been numerous instances of, of, um, of camera flyers out there who've lost their lenses off the front of their video cameras because of that, that instance. So, why do we design the products that we do? The good thing about the technology today, cameras are very small in size, they're very light in weight. If we do want to jump multiple help. Uh, camera configurations, we can put one model on the side, being the video camera, we can put the still camera on top. The only other concern is the width of the box. And um, I've got fairly broad shoulders, so the way my rig is cut, the yoke is very wide, my three rings tend to sit wider on my shoulder. Um, these days with articulated harnesses, you can do your chest straps up, and it really doesn't pull the rig in on your shoulders. Um, they're a lot more comfortable. The thing is, what we look at is the width of the box, or specifically the width of the camera. Some of the other design concerns that we've had to face is the installation of the HypoD Pro. The HypoD Pro is a revolutionary product that has allowed us to easily remote control the camera using a button on the side like this one here. It gives us great feedback of the status of what the camera is doing, whether it's record, standby, battery, other faults. Um, there are some great features of the hypo, we've got the photo feature, you can actually take stills off these new cameras. The only big concern for us is, as a designer is that the plug is approximately 13 millimeters or half an inch in width that protrudes out the side of the video camera. So with the CX100 105 box, we've actually incorporated the plug within the box. The downside is the box has gotten wider. I do have a cage here for a CX100. You know, if you notice there, you're probably talking about 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch difference in width from the cage, which is designed to wrap around the camera, to the box, which is designed to incorporate the HypoD Pro. The only real issues we got then with the HypoD Pro is getting the plug into the side of the camera. So, in the CX100 case, very, very easy. We've designed the box to fit the plug inside, we can route the cable through the padlock go inside, we can, you can easily install the plug into the side of the camera before you install it in the box. It's a great option. What we've decided to do with the newer cameras was decide to hang the expanse of a thicker box, hopefully by increasing the safety concerns of the equipment that we're using. We decided to build a smaller box, this is a box for a 110, and the cage is also roughly the same size as the 110. So the only real issue we've got then is basically installing the HypoD Pro plug and what to do with it. The beauty about our atomic design is we've got a, uh, a situation in the side of the helmet where we can build whatever shape we like to incorporate into that flat section to accommodate all those design issues that we have faced. Hence we've designed to build the rotoplay. So the rotoplay has the same functionality as far as rotational control of the camera as the padlock. It's very easy to remove four screws and the nylock nuts are captive meaning that you won't lose them. And it also allows us to easily plug the HypoD Pro plug through the helmet and into the side of the video camera. It's a lot easier in the top mount configuration because you have a lot of 
easy access to that port to plug the Hype-ID Pro in. In the side mount, it's a little bit tricky for the first few times, but assume me, once you've done it five or ten times, you'll know exactly where to put that plug inside of the, in the side of the camera, and it's very easy to do. Same goes for our cage. This is our CX150 cage mounted on the side of our Rido plate built into the side of our Atomic. And if you notice the hole there, basically if I pull the line of the helmet back, I can, you can see my finger come through the hole. That hole is there to feed the Hyper-D Pro plug through and into the side of the camera. The beauty of the cage, easy access to the uh, viewfinder, you can take your battery on and off. Um, if you're busting cloud like we do in some countries, especially Australia, it's nice to have a box that fully encloses your camera so we don't have any moisture issues with your video equipment. So there are a the couple of choices we're going to have for purchasing an atomic helmet for side mount configuration. We do have the padlock there as a choice. If you're not going to use a Hyper-D Pro or if you're going to use a Hyper-D Pro with a CX100 or CX105, the padlock would be my choice of side mounts because it's ease of ejection from the helmet. Uh, if I was going to use the CX150 or the 110 cameras, um, I would be running with the Rido plate. Same functionality, a little bit less expensive, um, very easy to install your camera and take your box on and off the video helmet. So look, there's some options for all the latest uh, video cameras that are available and some of the thoughts behind the design that goes into building our products. If you do have any questions regarding the Rode plate or padlock or side mounting any kind of box or L bracket or cage onto, onto any of our helmets, please drop us an email. We're always willing to um, hear from you guys and offer you some advice where we can. Thanks very much.